Hi everyone, I want to talk about multiple myeloma. Multiple myeloma. Because of this presentation, I may just be using MM instead of now saying fully multiple myeloma. Okay, let's go. MM is about 1 to 2% of all cancers. And it's about 5 or 100,000. And about 160,000 cases and 106,000 deaths per year. It is worldwide. It is more in blacks than whites, lower in Asians and Mexicans. It is more in men compared to women, and it is very common among people with increased weight or increased body mass index because weight and increased body mass index could be contributory. It is slightly familiar, about 3.7 iron in first degree relative compared to the rest population. It is about 70% of all hematological malignancies. Not common among the youth, but elderly people, particularly people greater than 60 years old. What are the characteristics of MM or multiple myeloma? Someone is answering me that you're asking me. You tell me. Okay, I'll do that. Just listen now. This is plasma cells, and plasma cells are now proliferating. Okay, so you can just say multiple myeloma has plasma cells proliferation. And their pancytopenia, all blood lines will be affected and they won't form correct blood forms. Okay, so megakaryocytes are affected, so decreased platelets, erythrocytes are affected, decreased red blood cells, and of course, all the other um, white blood cell lines are also affected, leading to neutropenia and so on. B lymphocytes lines are affected and abnormal plasma cells are called multiple myeloma cells or myeloma cells for short. Bone marrow is destroyed and how that? Um, it is destroyed with osteolytic lesions, particularly the flat bones, the score, the vertebrae, the scapula and the pelvis are mostly affected. They have osteopenia, for obvious reasons, of course, because osteolytic lesions took place, calcium and phosphorus pumped out of the bone and released the circulatory system. So what do we have left? Ten layers, so osteopenia, and that will lead to what? Pathological fractures. You know, remember, calcium and phosphorus pulls out of the bone into the circulatory system. Calcium and phosphate are released into the blood. Mm -hmm. The characteristics will continue as there will be formulation or production of M proteins, that is, monoclonal proteins or Vance Jones proteins. I remember when we were in school in those days, we used to run that in the lab and they give us the reagent and we check in for it. Renal tubules are destroyed. Hmm. Hence, there will be renal failure. There will be anemia. And of course, there will be bone pain, particularly with osteolytic lesions going on there. And it's mostly diagnosed as sedentary. What are the clinical features? Anemia mostly. In fact, most of the time, because somebody is feeling dizzy, feeling weak, and he or she visits the clinic, and the complete blood count is down, and the pig decreases hematocrit, I mean anemia, then they want to do further investigations, then they will then come to this diagnosis most of the time. So that's why I would say it is mostly diagnosed accidentally. So there will be bone pain, and of course weight loss, fatigue, and generalized weakness. 
osteolytic lesions or flat bones like skull, vertebra, pelvis, and scapula will be obvious on X-ray and CT on MRI. It's likelihood of nausea, vomiting, test, polyuria, and groaning, particularly when there is hypercalcemia already. Still, with the presence of hypercalcemia, it could be moaning and psychosis. Some could become confused with muscle weakness, muscle pain, fatigue, and constipation. And of course, there's likelihood of kidney stones with renal failure, and we're having increased creatinine, and the presence of increased calcium will lead to kidney stones. Thrombocytopenia, because remember at the beginning, I said there'll be pancytopenia. So all cell lines will be at the downward trend, pancytopenia. So thrombocytopenia will lead to bleeding and bruising. And neutropenia will lead to increased risk of infection. In fact, that is one of the major uh, tasks of doctors and nurses handling these wonderful human beings who will be diagnosed or who have been diagnosed with multiple myeloma. Anemia will be in form of pneumocystic, pneumochromic, with shortness of breath, increased heart rate, dizziness, chest pain, fatigue, and weakness. The anemia here is due to bone marrow damage due to renal failure, remember, kidney is responsible for erythropoietin production. And dilution in case of large M protein will all lead to anemia. So anemia here is not just any factor. Now, just one factor is a result of many factors. Renal failure that is caused by multiple myeloma proteins and bone marrow damage from osteolytic lesions going on inside there with the dilution from the large multiple myeloma protein. Renal failure will be due to, it's even called myeloma kidney, okay? Will be due to light chain carcinephropathy, the presence of hypercalcemia leading to you know, nephrolytiasis, that is kidney stones, and light chain amyloidosis. Neurological disease could be found in form of radiculopathy, secondary to cord compression. And that might be secondary to vertebral collapse or plasma cytoma. It is mostly at the lumbar region and could be found at thoracic regions as well. There is going to be hyperviscosity, increased ammonia, increased infection, particularly in the presence or in the face of abnormal B lymphocyte or hypogamma globulinemia. Diagnosis. You can do CT, MRI, or PET. Skeletal survey is not necessary if you're able to do all these, but if you can't find CT, MRI, or PET, then you do your skeletal survey. And that will reveal punch out lesions or osteolytic lesions, even including the lung bones. It's going to reveal osteopenia and compression fracture and lytic disease. Protein electrophoresis. Protein electrophoresis will be in the form of serum protein electrophoresis and urine protein electrophoresis. Listing again, we are going to use both serum protein electrophoresis and urine protein electrophoresis. But urine protein electrophoresis will be from urine that has been collected over 24 hours. It's not the time that you're going to get to the clinic and I'm going to talk to the nurse and the nurse is going to say, okay, 
I'm going to get that for you, doc, and you turn your bag and they send you to the lab. No. It's 24 hour rank collected. Okay? If urine has been collected over 24 hours, then you can do the serum urine protein electrophoresis. If it's not over 24 hours, please don't run it. Okay? It could be combined with immunophysation of the serum and urine. And serum light chains you know, for all the asset. Still on diagnosis. If you are suspicious, that this is multiple myeloma based on history and clinical features, do your complete blood count. It's going to give you low platelets. It's going to give you um, decreased white blood cells, and particularly neutrophils. It's going to give you decreased hematocrites, giving you anemia. And you run your peripheral blood smear. So you're going to see all the progenitor cells. And you're going to see that. And you run your electrolytes. Mm -hmm. What is happening to phosphate? It's going to be high. Calcium will be high. And blood, urea, nitrogen, and creatinine. Creatinine will be high because they're likely going to be dealing with renal failure. Have a mean to know what is happening to the liver, LDH, C-reactive protein, and microglobulin. Still, on diagnosis. We're going to have serum free monoclonal light chain analysis. If the multiple myeloma proteins is greater than 5 grams per DL, uh, per viscosity is very likely. And bone marrow aspiration and biopsy with immunophenotyping will be necessary. And you are going to ask it for the immunoglobulin, immunoglobulin A. Immunoglobulin G, immunoglobulin D, immunoglobulin M, you know, because we are talking about B lymphocytes mostly affected here. Okay, so we need to ask it for the level of those immunoglobulins. Okay, with that, I've come to the end of this first part of multiple myeloma. Um, I'll be talking about multiple myeloma treatment in the next presentation. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Please subscribe to my channel so that you can get these presentations immediately they are published. Thank you.